Hi guys, welcome back to my workshop. I'm John, a novice radio guy. And um, today I want to talk about an Atwater Kent 55C, which is an early model Atwater Kent. This one was probably built in 29. I, I kind of boiled it down to that year. And I've had a lot of problems with it. I'm getting ready to finish up on this. This has been a six month project, so I'm looking forward to this. Some of the problems I caused myself, which is what we're going to be talking about today in this video, or what I'm going to be talking, I guess you'll be listening. Um, first of all, of course, you have to replace all resistors in this thing under the chassis. And um, you got to take the bottom plate off to do that. And also replace all the capacitors. There's a few uh, sardine cans, depending on your model, you either have two or three of these looking things on the bottom of your uh, chassis. This is, we affectionately termed the sardine can. I had three on this model because it's the later model. The earlier models only had two. Uh, those have capacitors in them. You could either restuff those or do what I did, which basically um, is just replace the capacitors where they sit. Now, of course, I built little forms for my capacitors so they would rest nicely in silicone up against the chassis, all three of those. And uh, there's also one of the cans. There's four cans on the back of these chassis. They have a power transformer can. I think this is an IF coil can, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember. Uh, this is a can that's filled with capacitors right here. You can see I've, what I've done is uh, replace the capacitors uh, just in the can. Originally they came in this doodad. This sits down in that can. This is a huge set of capacitors with all the leads coming through here. Some guys like to restuff these. I didn't take the time to do that. I'm just going to replace that all together uh, with these capacitors. And I put them in a plastic bag to keep them from shorting out on the inside of the can. And the fourth can is our output and interstage transformer can. Uh, unfortunately, when I first started working on this uh, radio, I discovered the interstage transformer was bad, and so I needed to replace it. Uh, the interstage transformer is inside this can right here with the output transformer, which are these two doodads right here, and they were stacked in the can just like that. And the output transformer has a quality capacitor that sits right next to it like that. And its leads, you can see here, are connected to the transformer. And then they run down under the chassis and hook up to the output uh, section, the speaker. Uh, problem. This quality capacitor tends to go bad. And this whole mess of junk is buried in tar inside this can. So when I popped the top, top off of this lid the first time, all I saw was a black mess in there. It was just all black tar. You can still see some of the tar here on the side where I was a little messy with it. I tried to melt it down far enough where I could get down here and just clip this wire on this uh, capacitor to disengage it. However, these leads came got pulled out of the transformer, which effectively destroyed this transformer. So now I had to replace both transformers. The interstage transformer, which had a bad wire somewhere in it, and now the output transformer because I ruined it. So, um, basically this is how they're going to be sitting in the can. If you want to go down and try to melt that tar, 
you're going to have to melt it low enough to get to the bottom of this capacitor where you can snip one of these wires. And you have to be extremely careful uh, because that pulled out of that transformer very easily. So, okay, if you want to try to replace your quality capacitor inside the tar, uh, let me ex I'm going to use this to explain a little bit better of how these things sit inside the can and inside the tar. Uh, when you first pop the top, you're just going to see tar in the can. What I did was lay mine uh, on its side in my garage over a like trash can. And I used a uh, paint gun, a, a heat gun, to blow heat into the top of the can and melt the tar out. And the tar just kind of dribbled into the trash can. And eventually you're going to see this, the top of the transformer and the top of the uh, quality uh, capacitor, which is sitting vertically. And I didn't know what I was doing when I did mine. I was looking for wires. I couldn't see any. And incidentally, these things are going to be black. I've got them in color here so that you can tell what they are. But everything's going to be black when you look at it. You'll be able to notice the forms of these things, though. So what you need to do is heat enough tar to get down to the bottom of that quality transformer. And if we look up here at this other diagram, you can see that it's about two and a half, three inches long. So you have to melt all that tar out to get down to the bottom where you can just clip one of those wires coming off of the uh, quality capacitor. And make sure that you don't tug on that pol uh, quality capacitor because... Uh, you'll pull the lugs right out of the transformer, which will destroy the transformer like I did. So just uh, melt enough tar to get to the bottom of that uh, capacitor, look at the wires on the bottom of the capacitor, and snip one of them. And that effectively will take that out of the circuit. And you can put your top back on and go about your business. What I'm doing is replacing uh, the transformer itself in the rest of this video. So uh, I just wanted to explain that for you. At that point, when this pulled out, I realized it was broken. I put the whole can in the freezer overnight, let it freeze for about 24 hours, and then just hit the edges of it with a uh, hammer. You can see I used a hammer. Should probably use a rubber hammer. And um, to hold it over a trash can, because some of that tar will bust out like crystal. And uh, just keep pounding until all the tar and the transformers come out. This is my replacement output transformer that I ordered from Edcore. It just came in yesterday. And I'm going to be replacing this mess, or at least one of those, with that transformer right there. And it's going to fit down in this can. Uh, I'm not going to drop it in the can. I'm going to show you on the outside how I'm going to connect it. First, I'm going to draw my holes here. To drill and then I'll take a pencil and just draw a hole there where that mounting bracket is and on the bottom and then once the holes are in there I'll drop it inside and use screws and nuts to hold it inside now uh, that's a big transform you can see how much space it's going to take there's still enough space for the smaller inner stage transformer to go in there as well. You have to put it sideways this way, but it'll fit. Now I had replaced my inner stage first because it was the only one that was bad when I first started working on this. So instead of melting the tar, I found a spot on the chassis and mounted the inner stage transformer right there on the corner. The only concern here was to make sure that the tuning gang has enough room to pass it and I just bolted it right there to the chassis it works really well or at least it did before I ran the output transformer okay so now I've finished attaching the leads onto the transformer and I've mounted the transformer inside of the uh, Atwater Kent can that used to be filled with tar you can see in there pretty good um, it's mounted in there tightly. It is uh, a little bit larger than the original. Um, I want to show you those leads in there because you need to make sure that those lugs are not touching the can. I've got about 3 8 7 inch clearance here so we're good on this one. 
Um, that is a little bit larger transformer, but I think the uh, inner stage transformer will still fit in here if you mount it sideways this way with a hole here and a hole here. It should fit just snugly right in there. Okay, and here we are. All finished with the project. Running pretty good. Got the uh, new transformer uh, all hooked up. Everything's back on the chassis. The wires are coming through here. All the wires are hooked up. And everything's looking good. So that's where we're at now, and I'm just going to do a few more tests and close her up and call this one a day. Thanks for watching, guys.